Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about systems of linear equations in three variables. A linear equation in three variables is an equation that you can write in the form ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, and c are not all zero. A solution to a linear equation in three variables is called an ordered triple, and it'll look like the point x, y, z. Notice that they're in alphabetical order. Now, what if you're given an ordered triple and you want to know if it's a solution to a system? That's our first example. Well, to be the solution to a system, that ordered triple needs to work for all of the equations in the system. So what you do is you substitute in those values for the variables and solve each equation and verify that it's a true statement. We'll take the first equation, we'll substitute in negative one for x, two for y, and zero for three, or zero for z, and we wanna see if this is actually equal to negative seven. Well, negative five minus two plus zero, is that equal to negative seven? Well, the left is negative seven, so yes, it works. But just because that ordered triple worked in the first equation doesn't make it a solution to the system. We have to check the other equations. So three times negative one plus four times negative two minus zero equals five. We're checking that second equation. Negative three plus eight, is that equal to five? Well, negative three plus eight is five. Five equals five, that's true. So our order triple worked in the second equation. Now check that third equation. Nine times negative one plus five times two plus seven times zero, does that equal one? Well, negative nine plus 10 plus zero. Negative nine plus 10 is one, one equals one, that checks. So yes, this order triple, negative one, two, zero, is a solution to the system. Now, how do you find your own ordered triple when you have a linear equation and three variables? We have six steps to solving a system of linear equations and three variables. And we're gonna go through these six steps as we work through example number one. The first step is to make sure that each equation is written in standard form. That means all of the variables are on the left-hand side and it's equal to a constant on the right-hand side. All three of our equations in our system are in standard form. Next is to choose a pair of equations and eliminate one of the variables using the addition method. I'm gonna keep my first equation, 2x minus y plus 5z equals negative seven. And notice if I multiply my second equation by negative two, it will allow me to use addition and eliminate that x variable. So I'll have negative 2x minus 8y plus 4z equals negative 2. Let's use addition here. My x variable is gone, and my y variable is negative 9y. We have plus 9z equals negative 9. Now, step three is to choose a different pair of equations and eliminate the same variable. So we wanna choose two different equations, so not one and two, and we want to eliminate the x variable again. So let's stick with equation two because that x is by itself. So we can multiply that equation by anything in order to eliminate it. And we're gonna use equation three. Equation three, let's leave exactly how it is. Now, what do we have to multiply equation two by in order to eliminate the positive three x? We need to multiply by negative 
3. So we'll have negative 3x minus 12y plus 6z equals negative 3. Now we're going to add these together. Notice my x variable is gone. My y variable becomes negative 10y. We have plus 7z equals negative 10. Now, step four. We've completed steps two and three. Our resulting system, so these two equations we just got, are two equations with two variables, y and z. We're going to solve this system, these two equations, by using either addition or substitution. Now, look at these equations carefully. It doesn't look like you can easily add them together. We'd have some very big numbers if we multiplied. And right away, substitution doesn't look possible. But if you look closely at this first equation that we created, if we divide everything by negative 9, right, as long as we do it to every term, it, we don't change the meaning of that equation. This simplifies to y minus z equals 1, or y equals z plus 1. Now we can substitute this in to our second equation for y. So let's do that. We're going to substitute. So we have negative 10 times our new y, which is z plus 1, plus 7z equals negative 10. So we are substituting this into this equation. Distribute on the left-hand side. Now we want to combine our like terms on the left, and we have negative 3z minus 10 equals negative 10. Add 10 to both sides. You get negative 3z equals 0. Well, that tells us z equals 0. I'm going to start my answer up here. x, y, z is 0. If z equals 0, then we can substitute it into this equation, y equals z plus 1, to get y. y equals 0 plus 1, so y equals 1. Okay, now we know that y is 1 and z is 0. Let's take equation 2 that we started with, x plus 4y minus 2z equals 1, to find our x. x plus 4 times 1 minus 2 times 0 equals 1. So x plus 4 minus 0. So x plus 4 equals 1. Subtract 4 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 3. So our x value is negative 3. And remember, you're putting this in as a solution set, because you may have more than one order triple, that's a solution. Here we just have one. The very last step is to always check the order triple in the original equations. So you want to come back here to these three original equations and check that order triple in each of them, just like we did in the very first example. I did that for you. This order triple works. It checks for all three equations, so it is the correct solution. Okay, when you're solving systems of equations, you can have what's called an inconsistent system. This is a system that has no solution. Remember, a solution is where these lines cross. So there's no point that they share in common. You can also have a dependent system. A dependent system is when you have infinitely many solutions, so really, those equations are all the same thing. In example two, we're going to determine the number of solutions to the system. 
We're going to state whether the system is inconsistent or the equations are dependent and write the solution set. Look at our very first equation, 5y plus z. We can rewrite this as 5y equals negative z or y equals negative z over 5. And then notice that our second equation, we can add x to both sides, and we have x equals 4z. Make that look more like a z. Now we have x and y written in terms of z, so we can put those into our third equation, and we'll only have the variable z. So x is equal to 4z, so negative x would be negative 4z, plus 5 times y, which we determined is negative z over 5, plus 5z equals 0. We have negative 4z, 5 times negative z over 5 is just negative z, plus 5z equals 0. Well, negative 4z minus z is negative 5z, plus 5z equals 0. We get 0 equals 0. This is what is known as an identity. Both sides are identical. That'll help you remember that this is an identity. An identity means that we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions also means that our equations are dependent. That's what we saw up here. So we need to write the solution set for this system where all of our equations are dependent. So how do you do that? Well, what was our x? Our x value was 4z. What was our y? Our y was negative z over 5. And our z was just z. That was our ordered pair, right? So an ordered pair doesn't always have to be numbers. It can be how each variable is found in terms of the other variable. That's what you're going to have when you have a system that's dependent. So it's this ordered pair such that our variable z is any real number. And remember, this is our solution set, so we put those braces on. Let's look at a word problem, an application example. So we have a basketball player who scored 26 points in one game. In basketball, some baskets are worth three points, some are worth two points, and free throws are worth one point. He scored four more two-point baskets than he did three-point baskets. The number of free throws equaled the sum of the number of two-point and three-point shots made. How many free throws, two-point shots, and three-point shots did he make? Wow, that's a lot of information. So let's start at the very end. What are we trying to find out? How many free throws two-point shots, and three-point shots did he make? That's going to be our variables. So let's say x equals the number of free throws. So then y can be the number of our two-point shots, and z can be the number of three-point shots. Okay. Now let's see what else we are told. The very first sentence, a basketball player scored 26 points in one game. Okay, so the points he gets are gonna be based on the different types of shots he took. Well, a free throw is one point, and we add that to the number of two point shots. Well, each of those is two points, so two times y plus 3 times z, that tells us the total points from 3-point shots, 
all those have to equal 26. What else are we told? The second sentence just tells us the point values for the types of shots. Our third sentence tells us he scored four more two-point baskets than three-point baskets. So his two-point baskets are going to be larger than his three-point. So y equals z plus four. Two points are four more than three points. And we have one more sentence. The number of free throws equaled the sum of two point and three point. So free throws, x, equals the sum of two point and three point. Now we have three equations and three variables so we can solve. Notice that those second two equations are already solved for x and for y. Let's use those and put them into our very first equation. So we have y plus z plus 2 times z plus 4 plus 3z equals 26. Or y plus z plus 2z plus 8 plus 3z equals 26. Now notice this equation still has one y. So we want to replace this y with our y equation. So z plus 4 plus z plus 2z plus 8 plus 3z equals 26. Now let's combine all of our like terms on the left hand side. We got a lot of z's. We have seven z's plus our constant 12 equals 26. Subtract 12. We have seven z equals 14. So divide by seven and we get z equals two. Okay, z equals two. We can take this and substitute it in for our y equation. So y equals z plus 4. So y equals 2 plus 4. So y equals 6. Now take this and substitute it with our z into our x equation. So x equals y plus z. And x is equal to y, which is 6, plus z, which is 2, so x equals 8. Our ordered triple is going to be 8, 6, 2. But this is an application problem, so we have to be able to explain what that means. Well, 8 tells us the number of free throws. So we have 8 free throws. 6 is our y variable, that's the number of two-point shots. So we have 6 two-point shots and 2 three-point shots. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math videos.